let's get started. Last week we looked at uh, understanding the role of customer journey for e-commerce websites. Now, we did say that customer journeys are so important. Why? For a very simple reason that that could ultimately make or break an e-commerce business. Right? Because when you have a good customer journey, you're likely to do what? To have a process put in place that would enable people to buy, right? But when you have a customer journey that is not clear enough, right? And there are, there are problems on the way, then it's very hard to convert visitors into customers, which is what the conversion rate metrics tells us, right? So this week, what we want to do, we want to move into more on the infrastructure side of e-commerce sites, where we're looking at the e-commerce fulfillment. Now, these are some of the things we want to talk about. And I'm going to just try and show both. Or is it not working? So now we have both slides work, both uh, projectors work. So, what we're going to talk about are fulfillment definition, why do we use fulfillment and why, why that is important. Uh, we will also look at some of the best practices that research suggests when it comes to fulfillment in e-commerce websites. Then we'll look at some of the problems and challenges that companies face whenever they pretty much fulfill the needs for the customers. And then a little bit about homework or what we say activities for the next week's tutorial. Now, there's so many definitions that it, when it comes to e-commerce uh, fulfillment services and one of the key ones is pretty much that as a company you are fulfilling a service or a need that a customer has uh, requested from you. Now, that process is pretty much making sure that something that has been ordered online is actually shipped and delivered to the customer. So the entire process from the moment that when someone has ordered something in e-commerce site to the, to the moment that they have received it, that is pretty much the journey of fulfillment services, right? But actually it doesn't end there. Because even after you've delivered the product, what? You'll need to make sure that they know if they had a problem with it, how to deal with the return, exchanges, uh, or maybe they just don't like it. Now more and more e-commerce companies are saying, please, you will have a free delivery option if you don't like the product. Just make sure that uh, you pack it properly and then you send it back to us, right? So there are so many things, uh, even after you've delivered the product, that are quite important. Now, why fulfillment service is important? And why do you even talk about it? Now, when you have a small e-commerce website, right, you have, you sell maybe between 20 to 30 products a week, it's actually quite manageable. So you can go and prepare these things on your own and then go to the local post office and then you can send them and it's all fine. But as soon as you have a huge number of products you're selling online, it just becomes impossible. If you're selling more than thousands of products, right, how can you do that? You can probably get the entire family to help you, but that won't be enough either. And they will, they will want to get paid for it. You, you probably won't be able to afford it, right? So that's when fulfillment service comes in. Now, let's look a little bit about what happens with this. Now, when you have people ordering products online, right? They, they will be living in different places, right? So when you go, you can't just ship all these 20 products to one destination and you're done. But you actually need to make sure that every product gets shipped into the destination of uh, the address of the, of the customer that has purchased. Now, let's look at the history a little bit. Uh, Amazon pretty much in 1995 launched its new business model called uh, virtual retailing, which is what e-commerce is today. Now, they have reinvented pretty much this industry and actually restarted the idea of trying to say, okay, we believe in the web and we want to do something about it. Now, what did they do? Of course, they went and they built up very expensive warehouses to actually manage the, those inventories and those products. So, the process is pretty much by making sure that even though you've got a virtual e-commerce website, you've got to need a warehouse, right, where you keep your products. 
But then, within that warehouse, everything needs to be connected in a way that it makes sense. So, what does that mean? What type of products you have in there? What categories you have in there? How are you going to check how many products you've got? How are you going to make sure that all of that is actually synced with your front-end e-commerce website? Are you going to sell products that you don't have? So all of these problems can, can come, come through this process if you do not have a full infrastructure put in place in your, in your warehouse. And that's why building similar type of warehouse can be very expensive. Now, as a startup, 99.9% .9 of the times you won't be able to build anything like that. Unless you have huge investments and of course you haven't proven yourself yet, so really it's going to be really hard or impossible to get that kind of investment. Yeah. Sorry? You can involve a third party. Right? Yes, that's true. And the third party can be done in two different ways. One, you can use third party services to fulfill your products, whereby you say to Amazon, please, I've got my own e-commerce service uh, online, but I would actually prefer to use your own fulfillment center to deliver and deal with my customers. And you can do that, right? And we're going to look at several other companies who do just that. Or you might even have people who say, look, we're not Amazon, we're not eBay, but we have our own uh, warehouses and we're, we're able to offer this service to you. Or they might even say, we want to invest in your business and therefore not charge you for this, but we will have part of your business. Or they might even say, we will have a, what we call sh uh, shared revenue model, whereby instead of getting paid for the service you're providing, you're actually owning part of the business. Now, this model is quite popular. Why? Because simply, we have very small budgets when we start with an e-commerce website. Now, in the past, when we've done some work with the other media company, which is one of the largest agencies in London, e-commerce agencies in London, we had similar projects going on all the time. Because we had some very interesting people coming to see us and saying, okay, I've got this brilliant idea, but I've got no money. And we really liked the guy, and we really liked the idea, so we said, okay, how about we build e-commerce service for you, but then we want 25% of your business. And they said, fine, no problem. We, we would only deal with the e-commerce platform, but never deal with the rest of fulfillment service or anything like that. We would only make sure that we'll be looking after the front end. And in many cases, that works very well. However, there were projects here and there where we struggled. Why? Because even though that individual that kind of pitched us the idea didn't really put enough commitment to, to look after customers, to uh, make sure that they sent us new products, new updates, uh, you know, new kind of categories or discounts or things like that, they pretty much didn't do their job. So one of the, one of the examples in the market quarter which um, uh, one of the uh, CEOs of the, well, the CEO of the company kind of invested on it actually we struggled a lot. Why? Because selling food, uh, French foods in, in the uh, market in London, they pretty much just kind of pulled out and were not really interested to keep up with this e-commerce solution even though they really wanted. They thought that by agreeing on going together in an e-commerce venture, that was it. You didn't have to do anything else. You could just keep running your shop the way you, were, you used to sell things and everything was just going to work fine. Because they thought that Selling online is like selling face to face, right? You just open the door of your shop, people come in, you sell, and that's fine, and you close at 6 or 7 o'clock in the evening, and that's fine. But we know with e commerce is totally different. You've got to be very proactive. You've got to make sure that everything you're selling is not just because you've got it on the store, but it's because it's combined with other products, you can sell the gifts. You, you offer free uh, deliveries, you offer discounts for the regular customers and things like that. So there's all of those activities do require lots of time and lots of investment. Now, what did Amazon do after this? Well, they went through this process to set up their own virtual uh, warehouse, which is today the e-commerce. Now, I'm not going to go into every detail on this one. But a step-by-step -step process is presented in here where they pretty much have the first thing first to make sure that everybody knew when they received the order, they had uh, an, an alarm bell into their small office at their homes, but every time there was an order they received, 
the alarm bell would ring, right? And very soon, that was becoming annoying because there were so many orders coming along, they had to stop it. So that was the time when Jeff Bezos, the CEO and the founder, he said, okay, now we've got something here. And so they invested everything they could to build Amazon that is today. Because obviously that, at that time they started with books, but actually made sure that the process put in place was so connected well that even though they were doing the business from home, from the moment somebody orders something, so the moment they received the confirmation on their order, then uh, at the time when the order was prepared and then shipped out, and then the customer received the order, and the notification was sent again to the customer to ask for the feedback and things like that, all this process was so well organized that the company picked up so fast. Yeah, of course they made lots of mistakes on their way, but it's, it's something that they, they, they got right when it comes to, to the... Uh, to pro provide a fulfillment service. Now, when you read through this, you start to get an, uh, an understanding what are the process more or less put in place, starting from step, the first process where somebody starts and makes an order, then uh, that order gets pretty much received and of course assigned to a specific employee that actually deals with it, does prepares the packing, prepares everything for it, and of course, depending on uh, the specification that was set by the customer, whether that's a gift or just a, a normal product, that takes a lot of lot, lot time. Then after that, of course, depending on the type of categories of the products as well, there will be specific ways to structure and organize the inventory. <clears throat> as soon as that has happened, of course, now with the new large warehouses, slightly, slightly uh, different process because, of course, the only thing that is, is so different is the fact that there's so many products in there. And then managing it, you've got to have a process put in place where, uh, for instance, in the, in the step four, there is a conveyor belt, I think it's long, longer than 10 miles in, in most of the uh, warehouses of, uh, of Amazon. So you can imagine all that process put in place to make sure that that thing runs so smooth that you can save time every single way. So the idea is to also make sure that when somebody orders a product online, uh, the employees that are working the warehouse will be assigned based on their location. So if I order a uh, DVD online, that order will go to the employee who's closest to the DVD sets and the uh, uh, catalogs in the warehouse as well. So this way, he will quickly pick up the DVD, put put into into the uh, into the packing process, and then move on. So this way, will be saving a lot of time. So the whole so there's so many innovations that actually happen within the where uh, the inventory and warehouse in the, in the Amazon and fulfillment center. So after that, of course, things get prepared, they get packed, and all of that, and then if if there is some, if, if there are products that are sent as gifts, somebody really takes them, you know, packs them, makes them nice and all of that. And then, of course, all the boxes are prepared, that's the, the step seven, and then all the labels are put through, and then, of course, they are prepared to be shipped by one of the largest uh, shipping companies, whether that's UPS, FedEx, or other services. Now, let's look at shipping options. Now, of course, that's the next process. So you've done the homework, you prepare the product, you ship that. Now, that's the moment where things are outside your hands, right? So how do you make sure that what you're using, the shipping service you're using, is actually going to deliver? Now, of course, what you need to do, you need to make sure that the deals you're making with one of these companies actually give you clear ideas on when these products can be expected. Now, these guys do innovation every single uh, month in their, in, the, in their services. Why? Because they're trying to speed up. We're talking about one hour del delivery from eBay. Is eBay becoming like a shipping service? Or is it like an eBay, like an uh, e-commerce company, right? Is it comparing, is it com uh, competing with the UPS and DHL and the other guys? You could argue maybe. If they're going to be talking about one hour delivery, what they're going to do probably, they're going to make sure that when you order something online, they're going to go and find the closest shop 
to them, to, to you, and then buy the product for you, pack it in, in eBay brandy, and then just send it over to you. Okay? There are all sorts of things they're going to try. But again, these are some of the companies, and when you look at delivery times, most depending on the company and the service they use, you have three to five, well, five to seven days economy, which is norm normally free. Then you have within three days, we should probably pay something, then two days, and maybe next day delivery where you pay uh, premium price. But what's happening now is that all of these services are almost like a default to become free. Like now, free in e-commerce is almost like something that you don't even discuss about it. How many times you went into an e-commerce website, you didn't purchase anything just because they made you pay for the shopping, for the shipping. Now that's quite interesting because it's the trend that is developing, which of course is costing lots of money to large companies. Now imagine if you're a startup, you started your own business. Could you afford that? Could you afford to give free shipping on everything that you're selling online while you're still all over the world as well? All over the world, like ASOS. Now that's that's huge. Now according to some of the research and some reading that we've done uh, uh, about the ASOS success with free delivery is that in the beginning they actually lost lots of money. But how did they recover from it? The volume, right? They sell so much that they can afford to, to, to offer this free delivery. Now, why do you have all these uh, cheap prices at Asda, for instance? Right? Sometimes you wonder how come they can sell so cheaply. Again, it's because of the volume there as well. Now, they, they, of course, they sell online, they sell offline. So the volume is so, so uh, uh, hugely uh, uh, kind of affecting the business that really gives the idea an opportunity for the business to offer after that. Now, let's see what research shows and good practices when it comes to shipping policies. Well, the first thing is first, a printed invoice. Now, no matter what you buy online, as soon as that package gets to you, you've got an invoice in there, right? It just shows you what did you buy, how much did it cost you and everything, your details and things like that. Then, it also offers you an opportunity to send feedback to the company. However, we do know that really written feedback unlikely for us to do. Sometimes we even ignore the online feedback from Amazon and other companies that takes pretty much 30 seconds to write something. Because we just don't care about it. Yeah? yeah we just care when, it, when it's a bad service. Sorry? We just care when it's a bad service. Yeah, absolutely. When it's a good service, we don't write any comments. Yeah, we don't say anything. <coughs> And that's exactly what happened to me just uh, a few days ago when I used DHL services to ship something to uh, to uh, Kosovo, right? And uh, they handled my service so poorly that I pretty much tweeted everything, shared everything I could in every single social networking channel. And I'll keep doing it, okay? I'm not going to stop, right? Because I paid a premium service just because. I wanted that that kind of uh, uh, ship, shipping service to be special, to be different, right? I could have used Royal Mail, it, was, it would have been like 70% cheaper than anything else. But I said, let me go for DHL because they're a large company, they'll make sure they get the product gets on time and everything, and nothing like that happened. So that, that, that special kind of service ended up becoming like a big headache for me. So instead of doing my other things I had to do, I kind of had to write them the company, phone them, blah, 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 so spend quite a lot of time on it, okay? And in fact, just coming back to your question, of course, when you receive this very poor service, you'll do everything you can to tell the world that even large companies get things very wrong. And when we do research at universities, sometimes questionnaire surveys and things like that, and we talk to customers, you'll be surprised that even really large brands get things very, very wrong. Now, a very simple research if you do now, if you go to Twitter, right, and then use hashtag DHL fail, I'm going to be there on the top, <laughs> okay, but then it's not just me, there's so many other people. So you just say, really? Like a, a company as large as DHL is 
you know, is not really looking after customers in the right way, and, the, and they're not actually making sure that they don't fail in, in delivering their products and services. But as soon as you start to look at their, their hashtag, you'll see that actually, the, lots of people have problems with their service. Now, if nobody showed you the hashtag, you'd probably say, no, no, they're probably the best company, you know, come on, use them. And in most cases, they, probably, they, they, will, they will deliver most of the thing. But of course, there are many times when they kind of ignore, ignore uh, what, what they're in there for, which is hand-in-hand um, -hand service. Okay? Where they will make sure that the service gets, the product gets delivered from, from the time you've, you've uh, posted it to the time that somebody has received it. Now, if we come back to this one, the next one, what you normally can do as a practice is print a catalog as well. So how many times you shop something on Amazon and then apart from sending you the, uh, the invoice and things like that, they also send you a catalog, maybe something that you might be interested in. Sometimes they also send you things from third party companies. So a bit of advertising in there as well. Now, a personalized thank you letter is quite a good one too. Now of course, these are some of the things that sometimes get ignored from the companies. By just telling people that have shopped with you that you're pleased that they're doing business with you. And it does make a difference. So research suggests continuously that these are some of the little things that make a big difference when it comes to shopping online. And it's also an important part of the customer journey. Then the other one is of course telling people how they can handle with the returns if they had to deal with it. Of course, as customers, we hate having to return things because why well, most of the time you have to pay for it, do the packaging, blah blah blah. And sometimes you just say, forget it, you know, it'll be okay. It wasn't that expensive anyway. I don't have time to deal with it, just forget it. But companies that do a very good job, they will actually make sure that they send you sometimes a package for uh, for return for return uh, to return products as well. And that is so clever in the way that they say like we're not just giving you a free shipping. But actually free return too if you wanted to send something back to us. Now that just shows that some of these companies are fully committed to really look after you. They're not trying to squeeze the budget from you and get everything they can from you and just sell and sell and sell. Every second company you do a bit of tests in the UK, buying from them is going to be super easy. But contacting customer support just do a simple random check. Five companies in the UK, you're unlikely to find their phone number and the website in the first place. And just say, really? When I wanted to buy something, you gave me the number straight away. But now that I've bought something from you and I need your help, I can't even find the number when I call. Or it'll be a paid number. Sorry? Or it'll be a paid number. Or it'll be a paid number. You say, what? 55p, 39p? Oh, is, if, if, if it's, it's from a mobile, it's going to cost you 66p or something like that. You say, really? Well, you know, I don't have a uh, home number, so of course I'm going to use the mobile. So then you start ringing them, and that's, you know, you have to wait in the queue, and money, money, blah. So by the time you sort it out, it probably has cost you around five quid or something. So you can see that things don't, don't add up, right? You're saying as a company, yeah. Sales number, if, if you wanted to buy something, this is this is our number that you need to phone. But if you want to support, you know, use one of our forms online, or if you phone us, that's the number that'll cost you. Okay? And that's just things that really make you wonder as a customer, well really, are they just trying to sell something to me, but they're not really uh, kind of interested to, to give me a chance to talk to them whenever I need that. Of course, there are other things that companies do within that process when products get, get delivered. They offer them uh, customers, I don't know, discounts or um, money saving opportunities and other offers on new products that they buy. So that in a way, it tells customers that, okay, that's great that they decided to buy from you. But in addition, you're going to give them 10% on products of this category when they come back in the store. Now that's quite good because lots of customers will probably, imagine if you bought a bike online, right? And I bought one just recently. Okay, imagine when I get the bike, I would also get like a discount 
on uh, accessories for the bike, right? And I'll be like, well, that's brilliant because I'm going to need some of those things, right? So it, it would immediately help me to get back to the shop and say, you know, why would I buy from eBay, you know, accessories when I'm getting 10, 15% from Tesco's, right? Because I've already bought from them and they're giving me a discount on something else that I need for this product. So in other words, it's like a linking and touch points on the customer journey that help you to look after customers and then pretty much help them come back again to your store rather than going somewhere else. And you, of course, make sure that this is also done for repeat customers, those that really come to you often. Now, let's look at some of the shipping problem, problems that are there. Now, of course, e-commerce, as you start to understand now, is a lot more complex than it looks like. Now, what, what are the main problems? Of course, an order arrives uh, to, to its destination, but sometimes an order gets delayed to ship out in the first place. That could be because you received so many orders you can't ship them out on time. That could be maybe you received orders for the products you do not have. So you've got to make sure you contact the supplier and make sure you get the product as soon as possible so then you can ship it out to the customers. Sometimes it also happens that um, things get, uh, get lost in transit, they're just lost somewhere. And shipping companies, they say, well, we haven't got it. And you say, well, yes, we did use your service. So that's normally what happens. How do you deal with that? This needs to be part of your planning of the fulfillment service anyway. Now, the other thing is, of course, customers sometimes decide to cancel their order. How are you going to deal with that? Are you going to be quick enough to inform your inventory, your, your warehouse, that the order has been cancelled so they don't start to ship the order and give it for free to customers? Okay, and these are really major things that pretty much can impact the overall business performance. The other thing is, of course, the customers in many, in many cases receive things that do not fit them or something like that, they really want to return them. How are you going to deal with it? Are you going to offer just a free delivery but not free return? If you're going to get them to pay for the return, you pretty much make it quite hard for them to do that. So, you've got to think hard, but then, is that going to impact your overall uh, profits and revenues? Of course it will. So, how are you going to deal with that, right? The other thing is, of course, the customer will want to exchange there and say, yeah, we like it, but we want another color. We like these, these jeans, but, you know, we'd rather have another color. So, you've got to make sure that you collect it on time and that you send new uh, pair of jeans to that customer on time as well. So all of this, all of this is something that must be synchronized so well with the warehouse, which is what fulfillment service does, so that you don't miss anything on this on this journey. Now, managing inventory. We said earlier, you've got to be very careful not to sell products you do not have. So you have an empty uh, warehouse. <laughs> and then you're selling things online, right? And that's because you have missed a connection point somewhere in that journey, fulfillment service journey, whereby you're actually not aware that there are so many products that you're selling are actually not in the warehouse. You don't, you don't have them in the stock. And that's, of course, one of the major problems that sometimes there are also lots of delays from the companies because they sold you something they don't have. Now, they can't call you and say, oh, by the way, we sold you a product that we don't have, so now we're going to try and find it out and then ship it for you on time. Of course, it, it, it will be delayed for sure. Now, what are some of the professional kind of attitudes and, and things and approaches that one company needs to be thinking, analyzing uh, when it comes to fulfillment services? Well, one of the first things is that at the moment somebody checks out and then buys a product, right? You want to make sure that an automatic thank you order goes through. Because how many times you purchase something, it took an hour or two hours, sometimes even a day, to receive a confirmation that you purchased the product. Now that's going to make you think, right, as a customer, you're going to say, oh God, you know, did I, did I share my credit card details with the companies I should not trust? 
because I haven't received anything from them. Now, trust me, I, I, do, I do lots of research, and sometimes I buy from different companies just because I want to see how well they handle this service, right? Sometimes even large companies take a long time to send you confirmation that you purchase a product. Now sometimes their system or the infrastructure or the service do not do it on time because this is an automatic thing. It, it's not a human doing it. It's just the server automatically sending something back to you to say, thank you for your order, you know you purchased from us. Now that's an important part on, on this process because that immediately shows how professional you are with the services that people buy online. Sending a follow-up email when an order ships, right? Now this is this trend is, is becoming very important now. Why? Because with the new technology that we have, you know, like a routing system now, uh, and then with, with the help of mobile service uh, that we, we use all the time, we can actually start to see where the product is at a specific point in time. Now companies like UPS do that very well because what they'll do, they'll tell you when the product gets shipped from the US, for instance, they'll tell you every single day, it'll send you updates where your product is. Now that's very clever. Because as a customer, you really appreciate the fact that you've been informed on the ship, shipping process of, of that product. Instead of waiting for a week and keep wondering when that product is going to get to you on the day when you're not going to be at home. And that's very annoying, isn't it? Because it could be a product you really need. It could be a product you need for a party. It could be a product you need for a wedding. Whatever it is, right? So you can't really afford not to uh, miss that product when it, got, when it gets delivered to you. But that process alone put in place that informs the customer throughout the journey that they've heard that they know where your product is and that's the day you should expect to receive it. Now, that is very useful indeed. Now, company is also doing something which is quite clever. They say, we're not going to tell you every day where the product is. We'll actually tell you on the day as well when you're going to expect. You can expect between 2 and 3 in the afternoon. You can expect, expect between 4 and 5. So, in a way, even if you work, and you might just be able to say, well, I'm going to just pop in home for an hour until I get this delivery and I'm going back to work. Now, that's very efficient. And uh, it wasn't company Appliance Online, but a common thing, bless you, Appliance Online, where I, I purchased something and then they told me, they keep, kept informing me every day where, the product, where my product was, and then on the day they say, we just wanted to inform you via SMS and email that your product is expected to be delivered by this guy between 3 and 4. Now, yeah, of course I had to do lots of work at university, but then I had a chance to pop in at home between 3 and 4, I could go and then pick up the product. In addition to that, when the guy came to deliver the product, he actually phoned me as well. So just in case, if I'm, a, if I'm near my house, he would probably phone me and say, oh by the way, if you're around, I'm happy to come and see you and deliver the product to you as well. So now that is really excellent customer care, customer information and notification process put in place. Of course, offering special discounts, that goes without saying, and I said that these discounts need to be offered at specific points in time that are relevant for the customer. And especially when you've sold something to customers, you telling them if they needed something of similar things, they can get a discount. But do not offer me a discount for a bike because I bought one bike. I'm not going to get another one. And that's what even Amazon doesn't get it right still. You buy, you know, um, a camera online in Amazon, keeps suggesting you other cameras. It's like, okay, well, how many cameras am I going to buy? Why don't you offer me something relevant like accessories for the camera? Yeah, I would need that. Because I have a camera, but I, I, I'll need something to go with it, right? So in other words, all this advertising system put in place is actually not there yet. And that could impact when it comes to the shipping as well. Now, this becomes really part of our encouraging interactions. Why? Because when you interact with customers as an e-commerce website, you're actually telling them you're very happy that you're doing business with them. 
You're genuinely interested to do business with them. You're not interested only for one-time transaction. But you actually want to talk to them. You want to know how well they doing with how well they are getting along with their product. Is there something you could do for them? And that is that is quite good. And now with the role of social media, that's changing a lot. The power now is with consumers. Something they never had before. That, that's why this is revolutionizing everything. In fact, it's actually helping e-commerce companies do a much better job. But of course, also making it very hard for them. Because companies can't now uh, do a very bad job and try to cover it with perfect marketing material. And that's what lots of companies do. When you start to look at large companies and even e-commerce companies, you see some perfect ads, very clever ads, right? When you look at an ad, you say, oh, that's fantastic. I really want to become that customer. But then you go and talk to the people who are their customers. They are very unhappy. You say, well, that doesn't add up. Now, the idea of trying to cover bad service or poor service or like, you know, very bad quality products with the perfect marketing, clever marketing material, it's, it's gone. Because social media now is going to impact this because you're going to have all the customers who come off here and say, yeah, your app is fantastic, but your service is crap. Okay? So in other words, that is an important thing. Now, shipping order, uh, well, when you ship the orders uh, promptly, that's also an important element. Again, that depends on the fulfillment service you put in place. Do you have people who automatically will go and get the products and then prepare them, package them, and then ship them? Or do you have someone who is still kind of doing other things and have to wait before they package and prepare another product? Then, again, respond to all inquiries promptly. Now, this is becoming more and more important now because even though until now we, we would probably wait, we wouldn't mind waiting 24 hours if the company got back to us, well, now more or less we want and we expect instant answer into, the, into our inquiries. Now, large companies, of course, will go into struggle with it. So unless they've got a process put in place, they will have a problem. Now, this is sometimes what makes customers to come back or never come back to see you again. Because if I have an issue and the DHL is taking forever to sort it out, I'm not going to use their service ever again. And I'm sure they're a super powerful company. They get lots of things right. I'm sure they do. That's why they're in business. Okay? But, you know, there are also a huge number of customers Okay, they do have complaints about, about their services. And as I said, it's enough for you just to go on Twitter and actually see and you get an understanding. Not just Twitter, but Facebook and other places as well. Because they, they seem to have some processes put in place that they just do not uh, flow well when it comes to delivery. Well, the customs and all of these things, right? They just do not seem to understand that uh, sometimes when you ship outside the UK, of course, you want to make sure that that service gets delivered from hand to hand, and it, it just gets gets to the um, receiver. Now, a very quick uh, analysis when it comes to advantages and disadvantages of using fulfillment service. Now, if as I said, if you are selling 15, 20 products a week, probably it's going to be possible for you to to do the fulfillment service yourself, you do the home, you do the packaging, you do everything and then you go to the post office and then you, you ship them and that's fine. Of course, now Royal Mail, post, our post office and Royal Mail has got a package for businesses as well, small businesses that sell online that could give you everything you need so you can do the packaging at home and everything else and then the Royal Mail guy will come and collect and you don't even have to go to leave home, which is quite clever. Um, and actually do a very good service. And they're a lot cheaper than the HL. Okay, now, when you start to look at advantages when you use a fulfillment service, of course, one of the things that you've got to make sure that as soon as you have informed them that a product has been purchased, they will do the rest for you. They'll make sure that they go to the, to the, uh, to the uh, part of the warehouse where they're keeping your products, they will do the packaging straight away, they'll ship it as soon as they can, and they'll also deal with customers if they have a problem. They will give customers an opportunity to track these products, 
For instance, if you use Amazon Fulfillment Service, they give you that. Of course, you know, they, they, they will use their own branding to send out your products, so your branding is not really going to be much uh, uh, visible there, which is not always good. So, of course, that comes with a cost, but at least you don't have a headache. You, you know that these things are going to get to the customers. Now, some of the best practices, of course, online for the companies that sell large amounts of, of products, they actually say that the fulfillment service needs to be done by the company itself. And uh, a good example of the company uh, like Zappos, who had really huge problems with some of their uh, warehouses and fulfillment services a few years ago where that was going to break their business unless they did something about it, which in a way, they went in and built up their own warehouse and then where they picked, where they kept their, their products and of course they did the fulfillment services. The only thing that they use from third parties now is just the shipping service, okay? Which pretty much gives more power to the company instead of giving it away because that could impact the time of the delivery of the product. Of course, Disadvantage is sometimes no delivery, no client support. Some of the services do not provide support for the product. Sometimes company receives a reputation for not the fulfillment content, right? So sometimes when you uh, use some of these companies, you actually receive a bad reputation for not delivering it, but actually not the company that fulfills the service. Product gets damaged, mostly not covered from the fulfillment center. Now, a lot of companies do cover you for that, but some fulfillment services do not. So, in other words, if they uh, damage the product, you'll have to send another one. Some of the order fulfillment services and things that we all need to make sure that they are part of the service is making sure that customers will pay. Okay, so you're not you're actually collecting the money as soon as they purchase the product. So that needs to be, the payment gateway needs to be put in place into this fulfillment service to make sure you get that. Checking in stock availability, something really important. Companies sell, sometimes products they do not have. And that could be the reason why you get products late from time to time, but you don't know. Okay? And sometimes what you only receive from companies, just a, an apology saying, we saw there's been a delay, but that delay sometimes means that maybe they didn't have a product. Sometimes some companies are keen enough to tell you that they don't sell you a product they don't have. And now they, they are finding the product for you and they will ship it to you. Arranging shipments, insurance, of course, is an important bit. Uh, dealing with customized orders. Of course, when somebody sends a gift, you've got to make sure it is a gift, not just a normal order, right? And, and so that's something to keep in mind. In hard production, use contractors, deal with returns in a, in a, in a fast way. Some of the large companies offer fulfillment services. There are so many, but Amazon is really large, Shipfire, iForce, and eBay as well. Now, of course, as I said to you, it's quite interesting because with one hour delivery service that eBay is trying to put it in place, it's actually going to be quite interesting how that's going to evolve. Because that could potentially really be game changer, right? And that, that's, the, that's the service they're pushing very hard and testing in different places. Did you say Amazon is trying to do the same thing? The Amazon as well, uh, go, going to, well, I think they the their, their method, as I understand it, is they're going to have little delivery areas in blocks of flats at the end of streets. They're just going to hire <coughs> sort of rooms and things like that. And they're going to put goods into those that they believe people in that postcode would want. Yeah. And then, then they just go along to get them. Uh, yeah, I think with a bit of AI, they can do that. Absolutely. I think I've seen that if you pass by a Galleria, just near the Odeon Cinema, on your right-hand side, you'll see these, uh, these boxes, these uh, yellow boxes in there, and it's the Amazon yeah. services in there. Now, that, that place will be, will be used to actually make sure that they'll keep the product you're likely to buy, but also a place where you can collect the products that they're delivering to you. So in other words, Amazon wants to try and do that to speed up a delivery and sell, sell, sell some more. Because the delivery takes time. But if they had a center or a place where it's, you know, it's visited by many people like Galleria Shopping Center, then likely 
to, to get the shipping and orders quickly to the customers. And as, as you pass by, you'll actually see that all of these hundreds of boxes, yellow boxes in there, they have a screen in the middle. Well, what we have to do, you have to put the shipping uh, order well, the number in there, and they'll tell you which one of these boxes has got your product or service, which I think that's quite clever. There is a video in here that I want to show you, but I'll see whether, whether we have time. Because I think it's quite good that it just shows how, how the Amazon Fulfillment Service works. And it gives you a slightly better understanding of it. Okay, I, I think it's something you can probably view later on as well. Because we only have four or five minutes to, to finish it before some, someone comes into our room. But it's, it's two or three minutes video I encourage you to watch because it just gives you an idea about the fulfillment service. Now, when you look at some of the companies, they do really offer different types of services, right? And one of, one of, one of the things that you can see is like a breakdown of these offers that are provided in here. But one of the things that is quite interesting now with innovation is actually what is called IRS, Intelligent Routing System. Now, most of the shipping service are trying to use just this. In other words, trying to calculate what is the shortest distance that the shipping company can use to get the product as fast as possible to you. It's, it's actually very similar to TomTom, Tom, isn't it? Yeah. Because TomTom Tom will pretty much calculate every possible opportunity, which of course, artificial intelligence is behind this to actually make sure that that's possible to do and now is being implemented into the shipping service too which will very quickly calculate every possible route and then give you the fastest one uh, provide the fastest one to the to the driver so it gets your product to you as fast as possible as now, you know, the, the reason DHL goes wrong but I, I've actually been through the DHL system myself and been in the warehouses is because of course what they do exactly they have a number of warehouses and they say, we're going to ship from where they pick it up from yeah. to a central warehouse. At that central warehouse, they dump everything, scan it, and then they're sorted into different areas. And then they pick that up, send it on to the next one. You know, all the sorted ones go to the next one, where they pick, scan, and send on to the next one. And they try and do that in two or three hops. But occasionally, it might be more than two or three hops. And of course, every one of those, you've got an opportunity for losing something. And every one of those, you have a degree of human intervention. And the humans that are intervening are of variable quality, and yeah. variable care about what they do. And that's what's happened to your thing somewhere. Yeah. As, it's gone, as it's gone international, someone's picked it up. That's so cool. Don't know where that's going. That's fine, just, just, just send it there. Yeah, but because it's going three or four hops rather than yeah. single delivery, yeah. Every one of those hops is a, a possibility for error, of course. But yeah, it's a great system. You know, they scan everything. They have barcode scanners that push them onto the next thing, etc. But um, most of the time now, they're pretty good. When I first looked at it, I think they used to lose about 30% of everything they did. It was like, hey, get around. <laughs> Nowadays, I think probably it's only like 0.001% yeah. of them. It's, 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 it's not a large percentage of it, but I think, I think something that really uh, makes me think about these large companies, how they actually deal with with the times when they actually fail doing it, right? So instead of, now we all humans, we make mistakes and that's fine. But what do we do to cover it? You know, what, what, what do we do to actually deal with it? How are we going to make sure that the customer gets the best service even when we fail to do so? Now, when you have very good practice put in place to deal with failures in the system, then that's going to help you uh, pretty much keep that engagement and that relationship building with the customers. But as soon as you ignore that moment that when you have failed, you try to blame things in the system, or actually try to tell me, oh, by the way, the, the receiver or uh, branch in Kosovo or Italy or something like that uh, have not been very careful with this and therefore we're trying to fix it. Well, that's not my problem, is it? I've used DHL and I paid DHL and I won them to do the work for me. I don't have to call 10 different people to find out what's the problem. 
So the practice put in place to deal with failures or the problems needs to be there like most companies kind of uh, leave it out. Of course, real-time shipping for your eBay sales. If you wanted to uh, use eBay for fulfillment service, they will give you this, which is quite good, real-time shipping service. Real-time shipping of tracking, of course, it's more and more becoming like a default for many companies because you really want to know where these products are oh, that you're buying online. Again, as you start to see, these online e-commerce systems are becoming clever all the time and more intelligent. They keep becoming smarter. They need to learn from us. Our mobile phones get better every, every day and with the new update systems because they get better as we use them more. And the same e-commerce needs to get better with it. It needs to learn so much from us. Then when it offers us something, it's actually relevant. So the idea of the system, Google gets better every day. Because it learns from our activities of search online. And that's why these services succeed and do very well. And it's the same with e-commerce, right? So that kind of intelligence behind data crunching and the numbers behind the scene needs to be strong enough. So then when offers or support that are offered to us are a lot better uh, in general for the company. Now, homework, this is what I want you to do. Is it UPS, not DHL? <laughs> and then uh, find this e-commerce fulfillment service. Compare these with, it, with those of FedEx. And then kind of, they've got a very good, good approach where you can simulate an order and see how long that will take. Save your research notes for your own assignments, and then we can discuss next week. Suggested reading, there are so many things you can look into, but I would strongly recommend that you look at two books uh, from Race 2008, Design and Launch and Commerce Business, and Turbinate as well. So, thank you very much.